Hello, uh, I'm, I'm Phil Quirk from HPP NLP and uh, this is Tom Garbett. We're, we're out in Holland at the minute doing performance coaching uh, for the Royal Air Force snowboard team. Um, and we've been out here teaching them some of the coaching models and developing them as coaches so they can, so they can peer coach each other and also self coach when they get into competition. Now, uh, one of the models we've been working on out here amongst uh, many others is something called uh, self concept model. And what we've done with that is we've overlapped it um, with the traditional grow model of coaching uh, as a sort of technique and a tool that you can really add some substance to, to how you coach. Me and Tom in the next few minutes are just going to run through it really quickly and a real sort of over uh, truncated broad picture of it but it'll give you a flavour of how we use it. So I'll hand over to Tom who's going to explain uh, the self-concept model. Yep, so self-concept model. Excellent uh, coaching model. It starts off like this. So at the top here what we've got is the ideal self and at the bottom we've got your self image now the ideal self is your perception of what you should be how you'd like to be what you think other people may think you should be perhaps you might be looking at comparing yourself against peers that you think you should be achieving the same results against now the thing is about the ideal self and the self image they're all dynamic which means they shift contextually. So depending on where you're being, going to be using this model and how you're going to be using it to coach, the results will be very different. And what I mean by that is, if you're using this as, uh, as a sports coaching tool, the person's self-image and ideal self when they're performing that particular sport is going to be very different contextually to how they're going to perceive themselves at home or maybe in their, uh, in their daily job. The self-image, this is how you think you are. This is your perception of yourself as it currently sits. How you may think others perceive you again. Now, what happens is, this gap here between the self-image and the ideal self is where your self-esteem fits in. Self-esteem, low self-esteem is caused by having a big gap between the self-image and the, uh, between the ideal self and the self-image. What I mean by that is, if you have an unrealistic ideal self, that's off in the stratosphere and you're really trying to achieve an ideal that is impossible, you're going to have a pretty low self-image if that's what you think you should be doing. Alternatively, you might have a very realistic ideal self, realistic goals, but if your self-image, your view of yourself is very low, again, you've got a big gap and again, you get low self-esteem because of that. Here, with the self-esteem, we're in the domain of the feelings and here, and the ideal self and the self-image were in the domain of the thoughts. Now, the result of your thoughts and your feelings, the self-image, the ideal self and the self-esteem is your behaviour. If you've got a big gap here and as a result low self-esteem, that will result in your body language, your performance in your sport, if you're doing sports coaching, or whatever performance, whatever you are performing, whether you're doing professional coaching, the results will be quite clear in your small physiologies, your body language, but also in the big physiological movements, especially if you're doing sports here, the techniques you're trying to carry out. Do you want to talk about how this fits in now with the uh, grow model? Of water class? Okay, so. Um so what you've got, you've got a great diagnostic tool here to understand how someone's perceiving themselves and how they, how they perceive themselves going forward into the future. Um, and I suppose what you've got really is you've got ability here, which is as you are now, your self-image. And then you've got ambition up here, where you want to be. Um, now, as a diagnostic tool, this is fantastic. But what we can do now is we can overlay another model over the top of it, known as the GROW model. Um, your ideal self, effectively, that's your goal, that's where you want to be. So you... Now, in coaching, if, if, I present, if I'm presented by one of my uh, athletes, um, an ideal self with goals that are unachievable, I know then that their ideal self is too far away from their self-image uh, and they're gonna end up with low self-esteem because they're not gonna achieve their goals. So one of the jobs I, I have to do is I have to make sure that their goals are achievable. Um, so, for instance, if we use uh, snowboarding as a, as, a, as, a, as a context for this, um, for this discussion and this example, if I've just took up snowboarding um, and I'm literally on my first training camp 
uh, and I want to, and I come and say I want to be able to do backflips on the on the park. I know that there's a very good chance that the, that person's not going to be able to do it, so I need to work with them for achievable goals. Now, once I've got these achievable goals, we've got them set then, and then we've got an, we've got an ideal self we can start to work towards. Now, the next thing we need to know. is the reality. Now the reality is the behaviours that they're exhibiting. Now we'll, if, we, if we transfer those behaviours into skill, so whatever skill that they're doing at that time, whatever skill they're, 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 they're showing their coaches, that is the reality. And that's our first sort of transition, is to understand what they want and what the reality is and make sure that they're measurable and achievable. Now once we've discussed this with the athlete, we then start to look at, at ways we can make this happen. And this then comes down to the self-image where we can put our options in there. Now, with our options, this once again is going to be led by the athlete. Uh, we're going to try and give as much ownership to the athlete in this whole process. They're going to come up with their goals, they're going to come up with their reality, and they're also going to come up with the options. Now, what will often happen is they'll say, I think I can do A, B, and C, and that will press me forward. As a coach, and what we're going to encourage the coaches here to do is understand that that's from the athlete and that's very valuable. But this is when the coach comes in and then just gives the extra, maybe one or two, D and E, that can really make the accelerator move forward. Now, once this is all laid out, what we effectively have, just by natural process of all of this, is what's called a way forward. When we get to here, and we start to put all of these into action, and we move forward and start progressing, we can then return back Set new goals. Set new goals. Um, what's going to happen is their self-image is going to start raising. Their their ideal self will start becoming achievable as they move towards their ideal self. They can keep moving that up and up and up. And then what we get is progression and skill acquisition. The athlete gets better and better and better. But at the same time, we're managing their confidence, managing their self-esteem, and keeping them in a sort of real context. So effectively. This is how we use it. Um, so self-concept model underneath, overlay for the grow model over the top. And this can be used in sport, can be used in your professional life, can be used to set goals and, and understand how you're going to achieve those goals in any context. Um, so thanks for tuning in uh, uh, and we see you soon.